r slash no sleep posted by you slash screwy underscore louis 24 my sister is coming to visit but i'm an only child part one so it's time that i think i should share what still is the scariest thing to ever happen to me i should start by letting you know i was 15 and wasn't a believer of the paranormal in any way at the time i'm a seer to believer and what i saw back then definitely made me a believer i was always very interested in the paranormal despite the fact i didn't believe it I always loved reading about urban legends, wendigos, skinwalkers and poltergeists. I was a big fan of horror stories and the like. Some background information, my name's Louie. I was born in Florida, born and raised. And if you're also here you'll know I'm not stranger to weird events. Me, my mom and dad lived here for the most part, but my grandma lived in Georgia. My grandpa died before I was born. We visited her sometimes and one thing I was always told was not to wander in the woods. Everyone always had their own reason why. Dads, you'll get lost. Mom, you'll get eaten by bears. But grandma never really explained why but just would get stone serious and just tell me, don't go in there. That always kept me away, despite the other reasons. I never liked visiting that place, it always gave me the creeps. So a couple years went by and eventually my grandma's health took a turn for the worst and she eventually joined my grandfather. Her house was left to us in her well and was fully paid off, because of that we eventually moved in after her funeral. No, nothing got her per se. She was completely blind in her last two years and eventually overstepped one of her stairs steps. What was weird though was the fact that she was upstairs. She never liked going upstairs ever since grandpa passed and she didn't like seeing his stuff which reminded her of him. His office was upstairs and seeing things that reminded her of him always made her upset. She missed him greatly and it broke her heart when you finally passed. Luckily my parents found branches of their jobs from Florida in the nearby towns in Georgia and even though they were a good hour or two away depending on traffic, it wasn't so bad. The property she left us didn't look out of the ordinary. Three bed, two half bath. Two story with two bedrooms and one half bath upstairs. The master bedroom and last bathroom were downstairs with the kitchen, dining room, living room and den. There was also an attic connected to the upstairs and a basement with stairs leading down from the kitchen. We also have a big backyard with no fence connecting to the woods behind that. We had neighbors, but seemed to mostly keep to themselves, we weren't social neighbors ourselves, so no complaints here. There was so much land in between the houses that even if one of us were hosting an outside party you would barely hear anything next door. We spent the first week trying to get everything together, my new school, our furniture mostly replacing most of grandma's out of date furniture. So we didn't get our cable and internet set up for a while. I took us two weeks to get most of our stuff there and our affairs in order. My first week of school was terrifying, as it would be for any kid going to a new school. I made a couple of new friends Jason, Carly, and Sam. They seemed very nice and was even kind enough to show me around and help me find my classes. But, when I return home to my still unfinished house, both my parents still at work and won't be back for a couple hours. So with nothing to do or anyone to talk to I decided to check out the area. First I walked around the neighborhood. Ghost town was more like it. Barely any sign of life except for the birds flying and the occasional stray animal. Mostly cats, my favorite and the one that seemed to claim our house as his territory. Was an orange and white cat I unofficially adopted and named Yoda. He was fully grown but had a young and loud happy meow. Half his tail seemed to be missing, probably from a scrap from another cat over territory. He was the friendliest of all the strays. Also there were cars in all driveways but the houses always looked vacant, very rarely I saw any of my neighbors and when I did they were always in a rush to go back inside. Not like running, but more of fast walking while always looking at me like I was stupid for actually enjoying the outside world, but I brushed it off as just lazy people with more important, unimportant things to do inside. The woods behind our neighborhood reached for miles, but as long as I don't venture too far and I can always find my way back. I was no stranger to the outdoors and knew how to spot landmarks to find my way back, so I had nothing to fear, or so I thought. As all stupid kids do, tell a kid do not to do something for a while and they'll eventually do it. So I stupidly wanted to wander the woods behind our new home. Everything seemed normal at first, saw a couple deers, wild rabbits, a beautiful river filled with fish and the occasional bird squaking for a mate. Then after about 20 minutes of wandering around everything stopped. Suddenly the woods were dead quiet. I was immediately unsettled. Something's not right, I thought. I lowered myself and panned my surroundings. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. No sign of even the smallest hint of life. Not a single sound. That's when it hit me. An odor so foul and sudden I gagged and threw up almost immediately, it hit me by complete surprise and without warning. It smelled gotten and sour, metallic too. 
I've never smelled anything to compare to this stench. I looked around, still silent as a graveyard. I walked a little ways back to escape the smell of the area, it wouldn't leave. Like it was embedded in my nose and not fading in the slightest. Trying to hold back what's left in my stomach I decided it was time to head back. Still the smell followed and as I was walking back and one of my shoelaces got caught on something. I stumbled and almost tripped over a small root protruding from the ground. I stared at what caught my lace, still trying to cover my nose and mouth from the lingering stench. This root was off. It stuck upwards, reaching up from the ground. Black as coal and thin, now slightly bent a little from my accidental stumble. What the fuck? I said angrily and out loud to myself. I tried one big tug to get my lace free and more of it surfaced, as my eyes moved upwards from where the root was coming from. That's when I noticed it wasn't a root and what I thought was possibly some kind of stick or branch under some leaves above this root. Was in fact a now unearthed arm. The smell got even worse and react appropriately, I immediately threw up again all over the now uncovered arm. Now on the floor pulling on my leg as hard as I can to get free. More and more of the body kept getting unearthed by every tug. What my lace was only caught on one open finger now that I look, is now a closed fist. I was looking at this thing for a while, frozen in fear of what my brain is trying to process. A black risen corpse. I can see the top half now. Its mouth wide open, only held to the skull by what I can only describe as black licorice strings of dead flesh. Where its eyes should be are now wells of shadow. Thin long hairs barely holding on to the top of the paper thin skin scalp. AMD its skin so thin it looks like tissue paper. What bothered me most was there were still teeth, tiny but still visible grayish slash brown tiny teeth. While sitting there being held like a dog on a leash by what now haunts me in my sleep. Frozen in fear in what felt like a lifetime, just staring at death incarnate. That's when I noticed. It's once laid back head being tilted back by gravity, dead skined and bone. Is now moving. Slowly, barely noticeable is turning up towards me. I tried to scream, but was paralyzed by terror. It either fell or let the weight pull it down and with its open mouth fell on my leg. It's tiny but razor sharp teeth scraping my leg. Blood started dripping out. It's head trying to inch closer to get a sip. Still stricken by fear it got close enough to get a couple drops. I finally built up what little courage I had left and got up to run. But, its grip still had my shoelace. Screw the shoe. And I wiggled it off. I started to run and got a few steps away before stopping to turn back, just to confirm that I wasn't crazy. The body now fully uncovered. Still holding my shoe, looking right at me now. It let out a light, quiet white noise of a scream and anger at me. Once the opposite hand started moving forward to start crawling towards me I immediately started running home. As soon as I got back I called the police and reported the body, I then called my parents to inform them of what I found as well. Not 10 minutes passed before the police arrived, my parents arrived about an hour later. I started leading them to what I found. With dogs leading, me right behind to lead the way and with my parents and the cops following. Now I know it was getting dark, but I showed them as best I could the area I found the body. Of course we find nothing, no smell, no protruding hand and no body to be found. After hours of searching around, angered faces of the cops and disappointed faces of my parents for wasting everyone's time. We decided to head back. That's when I noticed, there, without a doubt in my mind, I see the exact spot where the body was. Was now just some disturbed dirt. Drag marks heading to where I ran off, but the cops and dogs couldn't pick up anything. That's not possible, I said as my skin went white and my blood went cold. With no evidence and nothing to go on but some new boy from Florida statement. The cops and my parents all turned and started heading back to the house. Suddenly, a small but familiar stench caught my nose. Then I hear a twig snap in the opposite direction of where the cops and my parents were walking to head back to the house. Deep in the woods almost too far to see, I see something slightly peeking from behind a tree in the distance. There it was, barely standing upright, using the tree to hold itself up was it watching me. As still as the surrounding trees, it watched me with its vacant eyes. Now, not black, but brown as the bark of the tree it was using as cover. My mother yells for me to catch up in her annoyed tone. A split second distraction, just enough time for it to disappear apparently. I looked around, searching for what I knew I couldn't have possibly seen, before sprinting to catch up with the cops and my parents. After having a serious conversation with the cops for filing a false report. I waited for the inevitable scolding by my parents, but they seemed too upset to talk now. Now the third room in the house was my grandfather's old office. Me and my dad decided to finally clear it out and was gonna make it our game room. We had about 5 gaming consoles together and was gonna make our dream man cave in this new house. So I was extremely upset when I see my dad emptying the room. 
trying to plead with my dad not to punish me by getting rid of the only thing I was looking forward to in our new home, he stared at me clearly aggravated. Then he starts the inevitable rant about what just happened before ending it with something that confused me more than anything I've ever heard. At the end of his speech he said, plus your sister is gonna need a place to sleep when she visits. There was a long silence as I stood in the doorway watching my dad put the few things we put in the room in the box we took it out of. Confused I asked, dad, what sister? He looked at me with a combination of confused and annoyed, your sister, I told you she was coming to visit and stay with us for a while, she's also gonna babysit you since now we can't leave you unsupervised without coming up with some ghost story and causing trouble. I just stood there, still trying to process what my dad was saying. She's done with her camping trip and will be home soon, she'll just be right next door to your room just like when you were kids. When my dad keeps talking about my sister, he sounds like he's reading a script. His voice losing all emotion like it's on autopilot when he speaks. But dad, I don't have a sister? Posted by you slash screwy underscore Louis 24. My sister is coming to visit? But I'm an only child part two. My dad finished, setting up my sister's room. I say it like that because he didn't put anything but one item. We had a futon that my dad kept since he was in his young adult years. Although he didn't put the mattress on. Just this bendable squeaky metal bed frame that the mattress was supposed to go on. But that's not all he did. He ripped up all the carpet to the cement ground and tore out the ceiling fan, literally just ripped it right out. He also covered the two windows with duct tape till no light shined through. He was up all night, in what I can only describe as a trance destroying that room. Throwing everything that used to be in there and belong to my grandfather right out the window and into the backyard. The next morning during breakfast I asked them about the bedroom. Like most mornings dad was sitting next to me at the dining room table as mom made her and dad's breakfast after mine in the kitchen. Dad just zoned out staring at the morning news. He's pretty much a brick wall unless you say his name out loud in a direct tone, which he always hilariously responded with a confused, yay. What? I asked about the loud noise I was hearing from dad pulling a fan out of a ceiling at 3 a.m. Mom replied with, you know your sister doesn't like the cold. Yay? About that, I don't have a sister? I responded instantly regretting after remembering dad from the previous night. He still zoned out with the news. I sighed with relief immediately after asking. I remembered how hollow my father responded the first time I asked. Sadly, I wasn't lucky enough to fall of deaf ears with my mom. I looked back at mom, she still. Too still. Like looking at a mannequin behind a glass window in the mall. All I hear is the mumble of the news crew on the TV. After what felt like a lifetime in five seconds she whips around in anger. Her body not turning with it. Now what makes you go and say that? She steps forward to me. Her body walking backwards, but her head looking right at me. With one hand on her hip, like when she's ready to argue. I dropped my fork on my plate and my jaw drops in horror. Half her face was changed. On the one half is my mom's scowl I normally feared and have only seen once, the day after he forgot their anniversary. The other half however was much more terrifying. Her left eye was swollen and red like she's been bawling tears all day, darting in every direction possible even rolling back occasionally. The left half of her mouth so far up her face it seemed to tear a little. Her mouth just wide enough to see some of her teeth, the left side with now forced gaps in between bleeding down. You know sometimes you act like you don't even love your sister? There's now two distinct voices. One sounds like my mom voice talking underwater, the other a demonic voice. What little left of normal on my mom's face disappeared on the middle of that second statement. Changing to a opposite turn frown. It might as well be touching the bottom jaw, this eye was just as swollen as the other. But this one holds nothing but murderous rage, looking directly at me. I couldn't speak. Frozen AMD paralyzed in fear at what now was once my loving mother, now haunts my dreams. I dart my eyes quickly to see my dad still just watching, the TV? But, now it's nothing but static foos. My eyes switch back as so I don't take my eyes off of what's in front of me. She steps forward again slamming her hands on the table. You love your sweet sister, don't you? I can't stop staring at this two-faced monster. As I stare wide-eyed and shaking in fear, trying to muster some courage to say something. The two faces switching sides as soon as my brain tries to understand what it's seeing. Say you love your sister. It screams inches from my face. Almost immediately and still not feeling fast enough I yelled in fear back. I love my sister, I love my sister, I love my sister, love my sister static sounds fill the room and we all stand silent, seeming to be waiting for something to happen. I'm not gonna lie, I peed. 5, maybe even 10 minutes pass as I sit in my cold jeans. I just stare at my mom staring at me usually just one stable eye at a time, 
while the other frantically looks around. Then she reaches toward me. I'm shaking in cold fear, waiting for whatever happens next. She grabs my knife that sat beside my plate, put it so close to my eye I can't even truly see it anymore. Just a gray blur blocking half my vision. Then, she quickly rotates the blade right through my dad's throat, covering everything on the table in blood including me and my mom. Dad. I scream. Yay. What? My dad says in his usual tone. Everything was normal again. No blood, TV on the morning news, mom still in the kitchen her back facing us, head turned away to match her body again, while she's cooking breakfast still. You say something champ? He asks. A no barley escaped my mouth. Ha he trunds back to the news. I just stare down at my plate in disbelief in what happened. Was that real? A dream? But I didn't feel like I was asleep? I think quietly to myself. I look at my lap, still sitting in my cold urine. But, if that still happened, does that mean the rest also did? I excuse myself to go change and shower. I get ready for school as fast as I can. I don't want to be home after that and can use the distance for now. Ready sport? My dad says holding the door open ready take me to school. I keep my distance from mom and just give her a forced enthusiastic goodbye wave. Which she returned. Heading to the car Yoda popped out from underneath it and gave me a leg rub and loud meow off to school. Dad walked past to hop in the driver's seat so the car would be cool before I got in. Saying my goodbye to Yoda before finally hopping in the car. The car ride was long and awkward especially what already happened the previous night and now I don't feel like talking either after what just happened this morning. So we then pull up to my school and as I'm taking my seatbelt off my dad tells me to wait. Sitting outside my school my dad tells me he knows the move has been hard and if I ever need anything or want to talk, I can always talk to him. He said, he'll listen and promise to never be mad as long as I'm honest with him. I give him a nod in agreement and we end it with a hug. Oh, Emma should be home by the time you get home. I know you miss her. Who? I ask. Your sister Emma, you dummy. What was a loving moment in a dark time in my life, now disappeared as quickly as it came. She should be all unpacked and set up by this time tomorrow. He says with a big proud smile on his face. Now go have fun at school. We'll all be waiting for you to get home tonight. He then puts his hand on my shoulder and gives it a firm grip that felt like it would start getting tighter if I even tried to move. He just stared into my eyes with that big proud grin on his face. Okay he then releases his grip and I immediately hop out of the car. He drives off and I have some sanctuary for now.